What's happening guys, UFC 270 this weekend, uh, it's been a while since I've done this obviously because this is the first pay-per-view uh, of the year so uh, hence why I haven't been able to do too many of these, uh, but I'm not going to keep it too long, I'm going to pretty much just do the co-main and main event, I'll break that down, give us my picks, uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, Jack uh, Della Maddalena who's uh, making his debut. Uh, UFC debut, he fought on the Contender Series, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's start off with that. Anyway, so yeah, he did Contender Series. Uh, I've watched him a little bit when I was, uh, I remember commentating one of his fights at uh, maybe AFC or Hex. I can't remember which uh, promotion it was in Australia. And I remember thinking, this this kid's going to go go good. Like, he was very well-rounded and uh, uh, good timing. And, you know, you could see he really played what was in front of him, which I knew he would go a long way. So I remember watching him Contender Series, knowing he would do okay, and, and he did, so... Looks like Dana White's uh, impressed with him, uh, so they gave him the contract, and now he's fighting this weekend, so I'm expecting a, a win from him. I reckon he'll go out there, do his thing, and get that victory. So that's a little pick for you. Uh, let's get into the co-main event. Brendan Marino and Figueredo. Uh, it's going to be a good fight. What well, The first one was a draw, second one was Marino. Uh, sort of funny, uh, they're having a third match, I guess. But um, yeah. I'm glad it's happening because they're, they're both uh, very good fighters. And uh, I've seen that Figueroa's been training with Henry Cejudo and been doing stuff. And, you know, the way uh, you hear Henry Cejudo talking and, you know, he's, he's all about game planning and, you know, trying to do all these types of things. So maybe they're trying to figure out Marino and see, let's see what they come up with. But uh, if I have to make a pick, going from their last fight, and I'll explain why I thought uh, Brendan Marino did so well was the way he used his lead hand, his uh, jab, you know what I mean? It wasn't just the jab, the way, the variety he had in that lead hand. The lead hand work that he uh, was using was pretty incredible. I uh, controlled the whole fight with that. It wasn't just a basic jab or anything like that. He changed the distance with him. He, he changed the angles of him. Um, he started him from different positions, uh, you know, like fakes, you know, you name it. There was a lot of variety and it made it very hard for uh, Figueredo to sort of figure out. So I feel like that's going to be a big problem for Figueredo again, just because of the variety as in that lead hand worker, uh, just to set things up. And I think he can control the fight with that. And because he's got such a good chin, I think Figueredo will find it hard to just, you know, put his heavy hands on uh, on Marino, which obviously most feather uh, flyweights are going to struggle with that power. But, you know, Marino showed that he's got a good chin and he can take it and he's tough. He's fit. He trains hard. He's going to be ready. So I'm going to go with Marino again. That is my pick. Uh, will he get the finish? You know, you're hearing that uh, Figueroa's in good shape. Does he win a decision? Or does he get that later finish? Man, uh, a safe bet, I'll say Mar uh, Marino. Um, if you want to, if you want to make, try and make a little bit of uh, extra money or a side bet, uh, maybe a, a fourth, fourth round uh, finish, fourth or fifth round finish. I can see maybe it happening later because he's tough and he's and he's so fit. You know, maybe he can figure figure it right out, uh, Figueroa, figure Figueroa right out, and then get the finish. So that's uh, my picks. Again, that lead hand just going to be too much. I feel, uh, and that's that's what I think he's going to control that that whole fight. Then we go to the main event, Gan and uh, Nagaru, uh, which is obviously a great fight you've got one of the most technical heavyweights you've ever seen in Ghan and when we say that that's legit you know he's so defensively sound um, his setups you know what I mean each each movement he has uh, it's all calculated it's all calculated defensively calculated so he's going to be hard to hit Nagano he puts his hands on anyone game over we know that even being very defensively sound might not even be enough for Nagano because he can punch through a guard and still knock you out. That's the power he has. Uh, you know, so uh, it can go either way. But I just have to go with, I'm always more about the percentage type of guy. Can Nagano catch him? 100% he can. Uh, so like, you know, it's probably still a 50-50 just purely because of the power. And, uh, you know, they've trained with each other. Maybe he knows the punches or he's figured, gone out a little bit to know when to land that punch. Maybe that, that goes that way. But percentage wise, and you know, if I think if they were to find fight ten times, Gan would win the majority of the time, just purely through the style and technique and things like that. Uh, so I just think he'll be too defensively sound, and he's going to pick his shots. You know, he's so good even with his grapple. A lot of people think he's striker, but even his uh, shots are so well timed. 
Um, and that can keep him out of trouble with Nagano as well, I believe. Uh, when he goes, pushes on the, on the cage, and like he's setting up, sometimes he goes for the shot when the opportunity's there uh, and goes straight over big, big punches. And uh, I think that can make uh, Nagano hesitate even more. Uh, so I just feel like strategy and, uh, and gun style is going to be too much for, for Francis. So uh, that, that's going to be my pick. I uh, don't see Gunn finishing him early. I see him finish him in the, maybe in the later rounds if he gets the gun to uh, tired, or it's a decision. But uh, safe bet, I think decision, uh, Gunn. And uh, yeah, again, that's going to be obviously on the edge of your feet when you've got someone like Francis who's going to be swinging. Uh, he's going to probably land shots and, you know, Gunn might shell him up, but, you know, you are going to be on the edge of your seat knowing that this close from a finish so it's always going to be a good one but anyway that's a wrap for today's episode uh so that's my picks uh i'll go with jack the local boy again whether it's a bias whatever but that's my pick uh but with a uh, co-main and main event marino and uh and guard so i uh, hope you uh, enjoy the card till next time see you later